Hey guys, so this is my wife, Kathy. She's also a med student, and um, we both use these techniques whenever we're learning new information for medical school. Uh, what we wanted to do in this video is really put it all together. Uh, we've talked about finding palaces, we've talked about choosing loci, we've talked about making images, and now what we're gonna actually do is do a real-time, real-life example of both of us uh, memorizing the exact same thing. We've never seen this before. Um, and we're gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a real life example of two different people's approaches memorizing this exact same thing. Yeah, so actually I selected a little passage out of the first aid book, which is kind of like the Bible for med students. Um, so it's just this little passage here, and let's get started. Yeah, so let's do it. Alright, are you ready? Yeah. Alright, let's do it. Let's do it. Make sure this Okay, so yeah, we're just going to go through, we're going to talk through our different images for the same thing. Uh, it's acute pyelonephritis out of a section of first aid. Um, I just want to make one quick note. Um, obviously, we're, so we're going to use this room as our palace for acute pyelonephritis, but you know, obviously you, didn't need, you don't need to be in the actual room you're using, you just imagine it in your mind's eye. I just want to make a quick note about that. So you ready to start? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, so it's acute pyelonephritis. The thing, the, so the first line, the first thing we learned was that it damages the cortex. And so for me, cortex is usually like the outer part of something. I usually imagine a crown. So a crown for cortex. And I imagine myself standing here with a crown, just like smashing into this couch. The couch is my first locus here. And so I'm damaging the crown, the cortex, um, and then there's sparing of the glomeruli and vessels. So for glomeruli, it kind of sounds like blob. I imagine flubber. And so I imagine the flubber is kind of covered in, vesicle, or in, in vessels. And I just kind of, as I'm smashing the crown, I move him over to the side and spare him and then keep damaging the crown, the cortex. Okay, so actually my first locus was this bookshelf right here because I walk in from this door. So I imagine at the top of this bookshelf, a bike helmet, because that's what I think of when I think of cortex. Yeah, it's just kind of similar. Kind of similar to crown, yeah. yeah. Um, so I imagine the bike helmet actually at the top of this bookshelf, and it just tumbles off and smashes. It's not a very good bike helmet, but it smashes into like tons of little pieces down here on the steps. And then for glomerulus, I kind of have an image of glomerulus in my head already. It's just kind of like this like pulsating little mass. And so I just imagine it here with a bunch of vessels. That's what it look, kind of looks like. Yeah, kind of what it looks like, right? So I just imagine it inside this shelf, kind of protected, right? So it's protected by like this museum-like display glass. Okay, cool. So, um, so the next little bit that we learned was stuff about the symptoms and the presentation of acute pyelonephritis. Um, so I came over to this basketball goal here and I imagine somebody, you know, standing here like shooting shots uh, and, then he, and then he decides he needs to pee and so one of the symptoms is dysuria. So he, I imagine him standing here trying to pee and he kind of is having trouble, so it's dysuria. Um, and then he's trying to pee so hard that he, uh, he starts to get kind of sweaty and feverish and so that's fever. And then he, once, you know, he's, again he's trying so hard that he starts to get this pain kind of in his back. And so that's the costovertebral tenderness, which makes sense because it's kidney inflammation. So you'd expect there to be kind of pain coming from the kidney area here. Uh, and then he's trying to pee. He's got this pain and he's just expending so much effort that uh, he gets nauseous and he just vomits all over the basketball goal here. And maybe even as an extra hook, I uh, imagine him just like kind of slipping and vomit and falling down on the ground. So that's, um, those are my images for the symptoms. Okay, so the first one I included was dysuria, and I just kind of imagined like a little sack of pee just stuck, hung like on a medical looking robe and whole contraption here on still, on the still on the bookshelf, on the side of the bookshelf. And then um, costo vertebral, I just imagined like a spine kind of decorative running straight down this, and then these have actually been turned into ribs. So costo vertebral angle tenderness there. And then when you open it up inside, it's just a bunch of flames, and that's how I remember fever is with flames. Um, and then the last ones were nausea and vomiting. So every time I think of nausea, I just think of a little boat because I would just get nauseous on ships. Um, so I actually imagine when I walked out, I slipped on a bunch of vomit, which on which a ship is kind of floating along and people just leaning over the edge and just throwing up, which is why the steps are now slippery. Okay. 
Cool, so the next thing um, I believe is uh, pathogenesis or the causes of acute pyelonephritis. And so I moved on to this little uh, like tube up here. That's my, um, my third locus. And so the first thing I think of is like sort of this rising... Um, I don't know if they can see the tube actually. Okay, well there's... So this is our, this is our fireplace and there's like an exposed like chimney. Right, kind of chimney thing here. So I'm imagining this, a bunch of pee uh, is kind of slowly rising up this tube here. And so that's supposed to represent um, urinary tract infection, or uh, yeah, so urinary tract infection. Um, and then I imagine uh, Shia LaBeouf, um, like from Transformers, is just like kind of splashing around in that pee inside this tube here. And so that's supposed to represent E. coli. I use Shia LaBeouf because he was in the movie Eagle Eye, which sounds kind of like E. coli. So that's, um, you know, a major cause of UTIs is uh, E. coli. And so those are, you know, that's a cause of acute pyelonephritis. I all, and then, so then he's kind of splashing around, but then suddenly uh, the pee kind of moves really fast and just like zooms up and fills the entire thing. And that's supposed to represent the reflux part of um, vesico ureteral reflux. So we've got uh, UTI from E. coli, um, vesico ureteral reflux. And then I'm imagining this kind of hedgehog for hematogenous spread to the kidney. This hedgehog is now kind of surprised by the sound and he's just kind of, you know, moving over and kind of butting his head up against this little tube here. So those are my images for the causes of acute pyelonephritis. Okay, so I too moved to this area, but I have different images. So I also use this, I don't know, just kind of perfect for this, like, ascending situation. Yeah, so, ascending UTI. Yeah, I'm ascending sure. UTI. It was, like, perfect, this little tube. So I actually just imagined, like, yellow smoke um, from the fireplace just, like, ascending up. Um, and that was my idea for UTI. Yeah. And for a while now, um, through some of our studies, we've been representing um, E. coli as like kind of a, what was milkshake, it? Milkshake, right? Milkshake, yeah. So I always just use a milkshake. I just imagine a bunch of milkshakes here because like, I don't know, we're having a party and people can come drink milkshakes. So the most common cause being E. coli. Um, for some reason, what's the name of that guy in The Princess Bride? Which one? or Vizzini. Viz yeah, so I imagine him, that's my Vizico ur urinal reflux. I just imagine him, you know, sitting right here, and then he's reflex kind of like reflex to me, and so like in the rush of things, I just just imagine him like with a like a huge knee jerk reflex, like sitting right here, mm -hmm. um, and he's like chewing on a bunch of straws, which kind of sparks my like urinal kind of ureter. Yeah, ur um, was there any a hematogenous spread? So we, you can't see it, but this um, this sunroom is actually built on the back of the house, and so this wall used to be the outside, so there actually is like a hose um, spout right here, and that's always been my image for like blood or angiogenesis or vessels, and so I just imagine like blood coming down here and draining into this basketball goal, onto which I hung a canteen to collect this water, and that's always been my image for like renal or kidney or something like that. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, let's go to the next bit of stuff. Um, so it kind of starts to get into uh, diagnosis, and so I kind of moved on to this white shelf here, which was perfect because uh, the next thing is that there are white cell casts in the urine. So I basically imagined, I basically kind of made sure to, to encode the fact that this was like a very hard kind of white plasticky thing for the white cell casts. And I just imagine a bunch of urine just kind of like dripping through all these shelves here. So I imagine there are white cell casts in the urine. And then another diagnostic feature is you want to look for, let's see if I get this right, striated parenchymal enhancement on CT. And so I just, you know, parenchyma is like kind of the inside of something. And so I just imagine these big stripes all across this glass, in, on the inside of this glass door here for uh, striated parenchymal enhancement on CT. Um, okay, so I'm still kind of over here, and unfortunately you can't see it, but you can see it on the rest of the walls, which is, we have white walls, and they have these, like, stripes on them, so I just, there's, like, a very obvious stripe over here on the right, and so that's where I got my stripe, and I had, like, little pears kind of hung there, like I'm drying fruit, so parenchymal enhancement on CTs, and then I had the mean, I, see, I just kind of knew that was his name, but that's yeah. why I associated it, yeah, I had him sitting here, remember, and um, he has this, like, white cast on, and it's just, like, kind of soaking in urine right here, so nice. he can't get it away. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the CT, your CT, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so the next thing is um, just, like, associations. I think it's risk factor. Yeah, 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 risk factors, associations. associations. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so I'm, I'm moving on to the computer over here, and I'm just imagining this giant 
So the next thing is indwelling um, urinary catheter. And so I'm imagining this giant catheter like tube um, just like coming right out of the screen here, kind of making it hard to use the computer. Um, and then it was some sort of urinary tract obstruction next. So I imagine like this big kind of stop, this black stopper. Somebody's like putting it into this big catheter here and stopping it up. And then it's diabetes mellitus. So I use um, uh, Turk from Scrub because he has diabetes on the show. And so, so Turk is here. He's the one putting in this big stopper into this thing because I guess he doesn't want anybody to see the computer. Maybe he's doing some stuff on it. Um, and then it's pregnancy, so I imagine him being pregnant. So that's um, <laughs> that's my that's my stuff for that. Yeah. Okay, so when I looked at the list of risk, risk factors, um, I actually my eyes just jumped right to pregnancy. I don't know why. Um, and that always makes me think of my friend Catherine's older sister, Laura, who's pregnant. And so I just imagined Laura laying on this couch right here. She's pregnant. Um, she's too lazy. She can't get up and go to the bathroom. The real Laura is not lazy at all. But uh, this Laura can't go to the bathroom. So she has an indwelling catheter. She's pregnant. <clears throat> and her daughter is here playing on the ground. And she's playing with some train tracks. And her leg is... Um, obstructing the track so the trains are just flying everywhere so obstructed you know your uh your new track and the last thing is her daughter is just crying and crying because she wants candy and laura won't give it to her because she's hoarding all of the candy so that's how i remember um the m w nice okay we've got one last little bit a uh, little chunk if i remember correctly um and that is some of the complications of acute pyelonephritis and so I, so my now new locus, I, so, the, you know, I read this new chunk, I decided that the couch was going to be my next location and then, or locus rather. And then, so what I have is, um, I imagine basically the couch was entirely just chrome, just like metal. And so that's to represent the fact that it can lead to chronic pyelonephritis. So I always use cro chrome for chronic type things. Um, and then the next one was renal papillary necrosis. So for necrosis, I always use uh, Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles because it's like the incra kind of sounds like necrosis. And so it's papillary. Papillary sort of just makes you think of people, um, even though it's not the exact same thing. But I imagine him sitting on this chrome couch, um, sort of kind of uncomfortable. And he's just kind of clutching his eyes like this. Uh, and so it's renal papillary necrosis. And there's one more thing. It's peri, um, perinephric, so just right around the kidney abscesses and abscess my image for that is always uh magnus carlson the chess player because abscess kind of sounds like chess and so he's maybe he wants to sit on the couch but he's just kind of slumped over on the side here kind of uh sulking and being mis being mad at mr incredible so those are the three complications of um acute pyelonephritis for me okay so i moved from the couch and i moved back here to the desk and so the first one was you could it could become chronic mm -hmm. so i imagine like a big large grandfather clock um, just up against this window and it's just chiming with this really ominous, you know, chime. Um, and then the next one, um, renal papillary nephritis, oh no, necrosis. Um, so I imagine, so like I said, renal, I always think of like a canteen, like for water. Um, papillary, I always imagine anything that's like pap-ish, I imagine mushrooms. Um, so it's just this canteen with mushrooms growing all over it and necrosis, I just imagine like a dead person. Um, just leaning against, slumped against this window, trying to drink this water, but necrosis everywhere, mushrooms everywhere. And then the last one was, um, perine, PNA, perinephritic abscess. Yeah, perinephritic yeah. abscess. abscess, right. So, um, I, the first thing I thought of was a periscope, so I just imagined someone like right here with a periscope and um, with just the the canteen like hanging off the arm, just shaking, you know, and you're trying to like peer into this next room and then your arm jams into this wall and causes a large abscess in the wall. Cool. So that was it. Okay, so that's, that's it. Um, so that was uh, me and Kathy. Um, of mullet, of two mullet memory, uh, memorizing a little chunk about acute pyelonephritis from first day, trying to put into action all the different stuff we've been talking about um, regarding our, our use of memory techniques for learning, specifically in med school. Just, you know, this one example was medical, but we'll try to do lots of different examples in the future. Hey, so we really wanted to get that all in one take, but my phone ran out of storage, um, unfortunately. Uh, so, I mean, at least we got the memorization part, but we wanted to talk about a few notes uh, just afterward. 
Yeah, so one thing we wanted to point out was when you're going back and reviewing these images, you might notice that there are some parts that are a little harder for you to remember. So like you might have noticed there were some things that I couldn't remember as clearly as I would have liked. And that's when you can modify the images you made the first time to more accurately capture the things that you're having some trouble remembering. Right, that's a pretty essential point is we do a lot of review uh, and we come back and sort of adjust the images you know, as needed. Um, yeah, a couple, a couple more things. Um, one is that I didn't even think about this while I was doing it. I don't know what happened, but I did the couch twice. That's not, I would not usually do that. So just make note of that. Um, so the way we do this when we're actually doing it uh, is we're, you know, we'll be at our computers and we'll, we'll basically type out these images. So that's, we do actually write down the images that we're using. Um, another pretty important thing that I like to emphasize generally is you know, don't try to get, you know, don't get bogged down too much in the memorization. Really try to ask yourself, you know, what you're learning and ask yourself why things are the way they are. Justify it to yourself to really understand those principles and concepts, um, you know, at play in what you're learning. Because, I mean, obviously that's a general learning principle, but just, just make a note about that. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. So, um, so yeah, that was two different people's approaches to memorizing this little chunk of first aid. We hope that was interesting and, uh, and helpful. So we'll see you next time.